we are in Matthew 9 where from verse 1, the Lord has been revealing continually who He was no, during that time. Uh, Amoni ang record ni Matthew no, sa iyang gospel. Exposing the King. No, exposing the King that was promised for all nations. So verses 1 to 8, if you want to have a quick glance. No, in verse 2 it says, Some men brought to Him a paralytic lying on a mat. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. So as I mentioned a few Sundays ago, some of us may be wondering, why is it that Jesus did not say, Stand up and be healed? Because the issue was not the paralytic. The issue was not his paralysis. The issue, as Jesus came for, was really the forgiveness of sins. Okay? And we need to remember that always, brethren. One of the um, misconceptions that many of us have had, I say us because I, I'm one of them, is when we read the Gospels and when we see the miracles of the Lord, ang automatic understanding natin is, Tesubong Lord, nagam milagro kaman. And that's why many of us, we expect our sicknesses to be healed. We expect paralytics to stand up. We expect the blind to see. But that was not why Jesus came. Jesus came with miracles, with His teachings, and with um, the driving out of demons, not just for the sake of miracles. He came so that He would introduce Himself as the Messiah, the King who came to forgive us of our sins. Okay? Amen to that? Okay. That, that should have been the very first working of the Lord in our hearts. No? Hindi ang pagkayo sa aton nga kabuhi, hindi ang pagsabat sa aton nga prayer, not to give us a better life, not to heal our sickness. The very first working of our Messiah as He reveals Himself to us is, Take heart, son or daughter, your sins are forgiven. And that is what strengthens our hearts. Okay? And so, um, I will say this again and again no? until the Lord takes me home. It's all right if you feel na Lord never ko gali na realize na because there are many people who are following Jesus for the wrong reason. There are many people who are following Jesus because they think that this is who He was. Na tagasabat lang sang ato nga prayer. Tagakayo sang ato nga kabuhi. Hindi. Jesus came first and foremost to forgive us of our sins. This man who was walking then with the authority to forgive sins is the same man who had authority to call sinners to follow him. And that's what we saw in verses 9 to 13. In verses 9 to 13, Matthew records his own calling. When Jesus saw Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth, Jesus said, follow me. Okay? Now, you look, look at the story, brethren. It does not say that Matthew looked and had a desire to follow Jesus. It did not say that Matthew looked at Jesus first and then decided to follow. Hindi. Wala, walang, walang inkling si Matthew of what Jesus was offering. It was Jesus who saw him and said, follow me. That's why it makes us think, no? na kita ba ang nag-decide na sumunod kay Lord? Or was it actually the Lord who saw us in our Matthew state, brethren? We were that person. We were greedy. We were tax collectors. We were not living for God. We were living for ourselves. And God, by His grace, sees us and says, follow me. And that was one of the emphasis that we had in this uh, passage. The calling of Christianity is not a call to religion. Okay? It is not a call na 
pag napatay ka, mapalangit ka. Okay? That's only one of the aspects of the call. Do you know what the call of Christianity is? The call of Christianity, the call of Christ to His disciples is follow me. Okay? And this is one thing that many of us have forgotten, brethren. When we share the gospel today, which again is not wrong, but sometimes we fail to show no, the real emphasis of God. Diba? One of the approaches that we have when we share the gospel is, pag napatay ka, kabalo ka ba? Kung di ka makanto. No? And so we share about heaven. And that's fine because that's really one of the things okay, that Jesus came to die for. Okay? That Jesus came to die and rise again for. But that's not all. Eh. That's why there are many Christians today who are just, they believe they're Christian, and all they believe is, ay, basta, ang importante, pag napatay ko, tungkol sa ginbatod ko si Lord, mapalagit ko. Okay? Pero ang ilang life, ang ilang kabuhi, hindi sila nagasunod kay Kristo. They're not following Him. And that's a deception. Somehow, eh. it's a deception from what God actually called us to do. Jesus did not just come to give us assurance of salvation. Jesus came so that with that assurance of salvation, we as His disciples would follow Him. Okay? Amen. Amen. We need to be reminded of that, brethren. Okay? The hope of eternity is an important hope. Okay? Those of us who are attending our Wednesday uh, Bible study in Philippians, we, we've seen that. Si, si Pablo, balik nang balik siya sa, sa eternity, balik na balik siya sa future, sa believer. It's important that all of us have this assurance that Christ died so that we would inherit eternity with Him. But the Lord also died and rose again so that we as His disciples would be following Him. What does it mean to follow Him? It says there, Matthew got up and followed Him. Matthew obeyed. Luke tells us that Matthew left everything. Remember, Matthew was a greedy tax collector. Okay? He was greedy. He had lots of money. And when Jesus called him, he left his money. He left everything. And he followed Jesus. Right? And we need to meditate upon that every day, brethren, every moment of our lives. Lord, have I left everything to follow you, to walk with you? Have I left my own understanding of Christianity? Have I left my dependence on myself? Have I left dependence on material things and in money? Have I left my pride? Have I left everything, Lord, just to know who you are and to follow you and to walk with you? Have we left everything diba, to spend time in knowing who He is? Importante na sa follow me, eh, di ba? When we follow Jesus, we need to know that we are, we need to know who we are following. Okay? Following Jesus is not, ay, gabilong ko sa isang religion, basta nagasimba ko sa Sunday. Hindi. Knowing Jesus is knowing His will, knowing His word, knowing His life, and brethren, that takes a heart that seeks Him and, and uh, seeks His wisdom and His will each and every day. Okay? All of us here, we are filled with the wisdom of the world. We have been influenced by the world since we were young. Imagine, kung subong lang tala born again, how much of our mind needs to be changed. And that's why napaka-importante na ginasik natin ang ginoo sa iyang a word. How important is it for us to be seeking God and His word each and every day? Not only did Jesus call Matthew, but he had dinner in Matthew's house in verse 10, and he was having dinner with many tax collectors and sinners na naging issue sa mga pariseyo. Kay hambal sa mga pariseyo, nga nagkakaon ang inyong Lord, ang inyong Master, upod ang mga iban nga tax collectors and sinners. Again, the NIV, if you have the NIV, uh, especially the 84 edition, it has sinners in quotes. 
Okay? Quote, unquote, sinners. Why? Because the emphasis there is the Pharisees were looking down at tax collectors and sinners as if they were not sinners. Okay? So they looked at Jesus and said, yeah, nakipag-fellowship siya sa mga makasasala. Ah, di ba? And remember, I asked you that question last Sunday and I'll ask that same question today. Have you ever caught yourself talking like that? Di ba? Hala, nga ang upod niya. Di ba? Makasasala nga tao. Adulterer. Ah, di ba? Palakubog. Grabe. And, oops. Galipat kita eh. Okay? We forget, brethren. If Jesus came to forgive us our sins, one of the things that our hearts admitted was that we were sinners before God. Who are we to look down at others, brethren? That's why despite our uh, anger no, and our battle with sin, we look at the world and we look at others as fellow sinners like us. The only difference with us here who are saved, I, I don't know, I, I pray it's all of us. The only difference is the grace of God opened our hearts and made us know Him. And that's why we look at the world with compassion, not with judgment. We look at the world with compassion and understand that the God of all compassion who has authority to forgive sins also has the same authority to call your husband, your wife, your child, your friend, your office mate, whoever it is who still does not know the Lord as you know Him, He has that authority to save them from their sins. And that's why we pray for them. That's why we share the gospel with them. We share Jesus Christ with them. Why? We're hoping that what happened to us will also happen to them. Amen to that? Amen. Kita, taga-share lang kita. Hindi kita ang nagabago sa ilang heart. That's why wala kita mahimo kung hindi sila mag-decide. Pero kita dapat ang nag-share sa ila. Eh. Because who else will share about Jesus except God Himself? I'm saying, except us who know God Himself, who know the Lord. Right? Amen to that? Amen. Okay? Diba? Sino ba sa inyo nakatilaw na sang Dairy Queen na ice cream? Katilaw na ka mo? Kasi bago lang siya nag-open sa Ayala. Eh. Diba? Ang Dairy Queen. O oh, are you sharing it with others? Okay? O oh, ba? Diba? Kasi pag nakatilaw na ka mo Dairy Queen, kag namitan ka mo, kag may budget ka mo, kaya siyempre mas mahal yung tayo, no? You will tell others, kaduta. No? Ang Christian, mahambal siya, kaduta, libre ta ka. O oh, ba? Diba? Amen ba? Wala lang, amen. Okay. Ang ginahulat, na, ang ginahulat na ito, may magambal na, ako ba libre sa iyo? Okay, kanto ta. Kahit kung hindi, ito sa sorbetero na lang tamagbakal ice cream. But if you've tasted and seen the forgiveness of Jesus, brethren, you will look at other sinners. Di ba? I hope that's not how you look at sinners. Okay? You will look at them and say, they need to know, di ba? And how simple is it, brethren? We just went through Matthew 9, no? I-share nyo lang sa ila, oh. Oh, ah, Pre, pre, ay kami i-share ko sa imo oh. ang Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 to 8, o oh, talawa, oh. Okay? Pakita mo ang abal ni Jesus. Your sins are... F- That's why, brethren, in the, in the congregational prayer, when we pray, some of you ask prayers for those who are sick, who are not yet believers. Okay? We do not pray first. I hope you're not offended. But we do not pray first for their healing. Why? Because even if they're healed and they don't know the forgiveness of their sins, wala pulo sa healing. That's why when we pray in our congregational prayer, the first thing we pray is that some, the Lord would send someone to share the gospel. And ang usually ginapray namon is, Lord, kung sino ang naghatag sang pray request para sa ila, siya ang gamitin mo, gamitin mo Lord. para mag-share sang gospel sa iya. Diba? Amen? Mas wala na maghatag prayer request. Okay. Diba? See? Because we're praying for you. If you have a burden for your friend or your loved one who is sick but does not yet know the Lord, you are most probably the first in the list of the Lord. 
in who he will use <clears throat> to share the gospel with that person. <clears throat> I remember how, um, I, I think I've shared this many times, I'm just reminded of it this morning. Uh, <clears throat> when, when I became a Christian, I was born again. Uh, we would have discussions with my Lola. No? Lola ko, siyempre, sarado, kandado, na, kwan, na religious, na Roman Catholic. And later on, sabi, Ma, uh, Lola, hindi na natin mag-talk, no? pati kay kwan, anong belief mo kay Mary, etc. Let's just talk about Jesus, who Jesus is, kasi that's the point. Oh, okay, okay. But she would always bring it up. And I just prayed for her. And, um, you know, I think it was two weeks before she passed away. She lived with us in our house. I remember I, I was still single at that time and I passed by her room and she called me. And then she asked me, Ricky, sabi niya, bakit kailangan may purgatory? And she was afraid. Okay? And I said, in my heart, I said, Lord, salamat. Kasi all these times that I've been sharing it with her, no? ang feeling ko, close siya. Only the Lord can open a heart. Eh. And when she asked me that question, okay, bakit kailangan may purgatory? That was my last opportunity to say, to say na, Lola, wala. Sa Bible, walang purgatory. You know why? Because Jesus paid it all. Brethren, for those of you who are not yet convinced, that G you see, if Jesus is the Son of God and He died for our sins and He is not able to bring us into eternity, His death is nothing. Though si Ninoy Aquino lang siya, na napatay lang. Oh, every year, gina-commemorate ang iyang angkalan. That's all Jesus is. If His death is not sufficient okay, to bring us to eternity, What's the point of believing in Him? What's the point if there are other ways to enter eternity aside from Jesus alone? If He truly is the Son of God. If He truly is the Messiah. That's why this is not about religion. Eh. This is about understanding. See, don't see Jesus Christ. Because if He really is God, why trust in any other way to pay for our sins? Accept Him. Diba? Why trust in anyone else to pray to the Father except Him if He is God? If He is truly God, nga mangita pa kita, iba nga intercessors. See, that's why the point, the gospel is what? The gospel is, who is Jesus? And that has to be clear to us. And that's why it's not a change of religion. Eh. It's a change of understanding who Jesus is. See? And that's what the Lord was dealing with the Pharisees. Why am I eating with tax collectors and sinners? Kasi hambal ni Lord, hindi naman ang healthy ang kinanglan sa doktor eh. Ang kinanglan sa doktor, ang mga may sakit. I have not come, he said, to call the righteous. If you think you're righteous, you do not need me. But if you're a sinner, then... That's the reason why. And, and remember last Sunday, I talked about this. This eating and drinking with sinners was not, Oh, Jesus is my friend. Look at me. Nasige ko sa mga sala ko. And I am talking. No. When Jesus was with them, you need to understand what was He doing. He was teaching. He was sharing who He was. He was not just being friends. He was sharing Himself. It is the same with us today. All of us, brethren, we have this opportunity to be with fellow sinners who still do not know Jesus. But it's not just having coffee with them and laughing with them. Pag may nag-green joke, kadlaw man ta, di ba? Pag may nag-reklamo, reklamo man ta. No. The reason we are given opportunities to be with sinners like us is for us to be the Lord's instruments to be able to tell them about Him. See? To tell them about Him and to say, you know what? Here is the one who was sent to forgive us of our sins. Grabe, no? And of course, the Pharisees, if you continue with Matthew, they just continued to question. They could not understand. Why? Brings us to our story today. Look at verse 14. 
as the story continues, now it looks like it's a continuation of the story, but we don't really know, diba? because this is a narrative, we don't really know what, what's... But Matthew, Mark, and Luke record the same sequence. Now it says, then, okay, then John's disciples came and asked him, how is it that we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? No? So the word then makes it look like while Jesus was eating and drinking, right? the disciples of John came and then asked him. Now it's interesting, di ba? From eating and drinking, nagkanto sa fasting na topic, di ba? Because if this, is, if this was in sequence, again, we, we don't really know, okay? But if this was in sequence, you can imagine that the disciples of John the Baptist, this is John the Baptist, not, not John the Apostle, looking at them, they're eating and drinking, tapos sila, twice a week nag-fast, kasi amun ang tradition ng Pharisees. Eh. They would fast twice a week. No? They would do all, do all of these sacrifices. Tapos nakita nila, nagkakaon si Lord. They were eating and drinking and, and with tax collectors and sinners. So why was this? But there was a shift. No? There was a shift from eating with tax collectors and sinners to now tradition. Why are we following tradition? Kagkamu hindi. Okay, now, again, whether this was in sequence or not, okay, this is what Matthew and, and as I shared, Mark and Luke shared the same sequence. This is what the Gospels bring us to. They bring us from Jesus ministering no, and sharing with tax collectors and sinners to the question of tradition. Okay? So, this, this was the question. Now, it's important to take note Sino ang nagpamangkot? Okay? These were not the Pharisees. These were not teachers of the law. Okay? Who were these? These were the disciples of John the Baptist. Okay? So we can assume that their hearts were not the same as the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Why? Ano gani ang message ni John the Baptist? Who remembers? Okay? Repent. Diba? And he was there to prepare the way for the Lord. So, to prepare the way for Jesus, he called people to repentance. Now, these people who heard the message of John and repented of their sins began to follow him. Now, at this point, Jesus, I'm uh, sorry, John and Jesus, they're, they're ministering together. Dungan sila, nag minister So, sige wali si John the Baptist, repent. Si Jesus, man, sige siya teach. Later on na lang, um, I think it's in Matthew um, not, not 11, but later on we see that uh, John eventually is, is killed. Okay? In Matthew 11, we actually see John the Baptist sending some of his disciples to ask Jesus, Ikaw ba ang ginaulat namon o hindi? So, dungan sila. So, sige ang repentance, na? pero ang iban, nag pa kay John the Baptist. Hindi pa nila nakilala kung sino si Jesus. Okay? So, there was an initial repentance, but we do not really know how many of them actually began to follow Jesus. But in the story, these were the disciples of John. Okay? So, we can assume that this was a sincere question. Okay? Hindi ginatest si Lord, walang sala nga kwa, na motibo, because these were people who had repented of their sins. And hopefully, makilala nila kung sino si Jesus. So they asked Jesus why his disciples were not fasting. Okay? The Pharisees were fasting twice a week. Sila, as Jews who followed the Pharisees, sila man, nag sila. Naaka mo, hindi ka mo nag fast Now that's a very natural human way of thinking, di ba? even up to today. You will always notice, brethren, when you begin to talk about Jesus, people will always ask, Tika, hindi na kamo nag-aamuni. Nga, kung mag-pray ka mo, amo na. Nga, kami, amuni yung ginehemo namon, kamo hindi. Why? Because the human understanding of our relationship with God is always tradition. Eh. Why? Because we're human beings. 
And yes, as human beings, our understanding of God is usually based on what we are doing. Okay? So usually, ang, ang ano natin, just as an example is, ay, sila nag-assign of the cross, kami hindi. That's, that's why many people will ask, nga ka mo, hindi ka mo nag-assign of the cross, nga kami hindi. Because it's very natural for people to ask that question. In fact, many of us, we probably uh, asked that question in the past. Some of us, we have stopped making the sign of the cross, but you still do not understand why. Amen ba? Ang sabot. Okay. okay. Hindi amen eh. Di ba? And it's alright. Uh, talk to us later. Talk, approach the elders, approach your discipler, and ask them. Because don't just do, stop doing something without understanding why. Kasi kung abo ng himoon nyo, eh tinagsigil lang ngayon yung religion. Nag-transfer ka lang. Uh, di ba? Sa una, nag-account kami ni Duguan. Subong hindi na. O nga. Uh, basta. Uh, di ba? Hindi pwedeng basta eh. You need to understand why. See, that's why they asked about tradition. About fasting. Now, fasting was a tradition. Okay? Because if you look at the law of Moses that was given to the Jews, there was no specific law that told them to fast twice a week or once a week. Wala. There was only one law, part of the law, that hinted that they were to fast. And that was found in their celebration of the Feast of the Atonement. Now, if you'd like to check with me, turn with me to Leviticus 16 and then go to verse 29. Look what this law says. Leviticus 16, verse 29. Okay? This is to be a lasting ordinance for you. On the day of the seventh month, you must deny yourselves and not do any work, whether native-born or an alien living among you. Look at that phrase, deny yourself. Okay? So the word fasting is not there. Pero ang application sa mga Israelites was to fast because they would deny their body. They would deny themselves. In fact, later on, notice it says, uh, verse 13, oh, let's continue. Because on this day, atonement will be made for you to cleanse you. The, then, before the Lord, you will be clean from all your sins. Grabe ang day of atonement, brethren. You know why? In the day of atonement, the priest and the people of Israel, to atone means to cover. Okay? Kasi ang people of Israel, ang message sang ginoo sa ilang was this eh, hindi ka mo basta-basta makapalapit sa akon. Okay? Hindi pwede. Biskat ang priest. Ang priest hindi siya basta-basta maka-offer sa sacrifices. Kinanglan ma-atone man siya. Why? Kasi hindi siya Diyos eh. Kag kinanglan, ang bilog na nasyon na Israel kinanglan i-atone. Okay? And that's why they were sacrificed for the atonement. And then what do we do? If you look at the whole Leviticus 16, they would lay hands on a goat. No? And all the sins of Israel, they would put upon that goat. Tapos, ipalaya nila ang goat and it would run to the wilderness okay? as a symbol of the sins being taken away. From then, the priests and everything that the people would offer would be accepted by God. Why? Na atone na ang ilang asins. Eh. Kanamis ang pag-fulfill ni Jesus Christ sang sini na feast, brethren. That's why we don't follow the feasts of the Old Testament. Okay? You may know some, uh, sadly, some Christians who are trying to go back to the Old Testament. They're trying to follow the feast again. They're putting up boots in NGC because they feel they have to go back to the Old Testament. Hindi na fulfill na ni Lord. Eh. Okay? Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was this feast of atonement. He atones for all our sins. Okay? That's why, subong ko lang na connect eh. Wala, wala sa akong nga notes eh. That's why when we pray to the Father, Okay? We say, Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you. Okay? In Jesus' name does not replace the sign of the cross. 
Abi na, abi sang iba na mo na eh. Ay, sang una, nagkasayang the cross ko, subong hindi na. Subong in Jesus' name na. No. What does in Jesus' name mean? What is it supposed to mean to you? What it's supposed to mean to you is, Father, as I come to you, I cannot come with my name. Kaya makasasalang ako na nga lang eh. I come to you in the name of Jesus. Why? I believe that His death atoned for my sins. And that's the only reason, Father, I can come to you. Okay? Amen ba? Oh, the next step, the next time you say in Jesus' name, okay, hindi lang pang cast out sa demonyo na, why in Jesus' name? Oh, di ba? Ginamisuse. Eh, kag, ano eh, no. In Jesus' name simply means, Father, I come to you only because of Jesus. Grabe, no? He's the Feast of Atonement. He's the uh, Passover Lamb. All of these feasts were fulfilled by Jesus Christ. That's why we come back. The God whom the Israelites called Jehovah, Yahweh, we can now have access to Him. Okay? If you believe. Okay? Wala na kami da. Okay? You have to believe in your heart. Okay? Wow. Today, if this is the first time you realize that, Hala, Lord, hamo na gali. Tungod lang sa imo, Lord. Maka-pray ako sa Father. Maybe today you have been born again. Di ba? Amen? Oh, today is the day of your salvation. Don't just practice tradition because you know what? In Jesus' name is also tradition. And maybe your tradition, just like what we're going to see today, is separate from the Lord. If your tradition is not connected to Jesus, it's simply a tradition. Everything we do needs to be connected to Jesus Christ. Okay? Later on, okay, if you've read the Old Testament, brethren, you will see uh, David fasting. Diba? You will see the story of Esther and they fasted. You will see the, the prophets, like the prophet Joel, calling people to fast as a sign of mourning for their sins. You see, what, that's what the Day of Atonement would remind them of always. Eh, no? Kinanglan i-aton ang akon mga sala. Okay? And that's why they, the, the law said, you deny yourself during this time. Why? Because during this time, there is a sheep that is being slaughtered and there is a goat where, that, where all your sins are laid for and you deny yourself. Why? Because it's not about me. It's, about my, it's, not, about, uh, it's, it's not about my sins. It's about God covering my sins. And the people would always mourn about their sins. That's why they would, a heart of faith would always wait for this feast to remind them, Lord, only when you atone of my sins can I come to you. See? But the problem with feasts was they would do it again and again. Eventually, sa iban, walang meaning. Okay? But a true Israelite would always look forward to the day of the Passover, the day of atonement, the, the, the harvest feast and everything. Why? Because it would always remind them of the Lord. Okay. The Pharisees eventually, I think we all know, diba? when we looked at Matthew chapter 6, remember, Jesus dealt with fasting there. What did Jesus call fasting? One of the acts of righteousness. Okay? And Jesus said, Jesus, hindi niya gin, kwan eh? Hindi niya gin rebuke ang fasting eh. Okay? Ang ginimo niya sa Matthew 6, ano gin check niya da? Ang aton nga motibo sa fasting. What was the motive of the Pharisees in fasting? It would make them boast of their piousness. Di ba? So they would fast. Tuod man gin, nag-fast sila. But they would fast to show others Look how holy I am. So, wala connection sa Diyos. Di ba? Amo na ang, amo na ang extended effect ang tradition. The, the extended effect of tradition is people begin to say, look at me. Okay? Look at me. This is what I'm doing. Okay? So, that was the question. But the, the, the disciples of John still asked the Lord, uh, Lord, 
why do we fast twice a week? Ang Pharisees, nag-fast twice a week. Pero kamo, sa inyong disciples, hindi kamo nag-fast. Okay? Na kami nag-fast. Look at verse 15. Balik ta sa Matthew 9. No? So Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. Then they will fast. Okay? So karami sang, sang sabat ni Lord. Eh. Okay? Now notice quickly, brethren, Jesus did not deal with the tradition. Okay? So Jesus did not say, ah, problema sa inyo, sala ang ginahimo nyo, tradisyon na. Diba? No. Who did Jesus focus on? Okay? As in, as in the rest of the gospel, Jesus focused on himself. Okay? Because it's not about tra- the tradition. The question is not the tradition. The question is the Lord. And he uses a preparation for a wedding. Okay? As an example, at least para sa Israelites. Okay? Because the, 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 a wedding of an Israelite had so many preparations. Meron nga silang betrothal, meron sila celebration and, until the time actually of the wedding. Basically, a wedding okay, was a joyful occasion. Diba? Kasi celebration siya. And that's what Jesus is saying. How can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? Bridegroom nga siya. Gaselebrate sang kwan eh, sang uh, pag-abot sang kasal eh. Tapos syempre, nagaselebrate sila. Okay? Pag wala na ang bridegroom, ito pwede sila mag-mourn. Di ba? Okay? Now, this was more than just an illustration. Jesus was again revealing who He was. Okay? Again, from verse 1, who is Jesus? Jesus, the Messiah, is the one who has authority to what? To forgive sins. Diba? In verses 9 up to 13, Jesus is the one who has authority to what? To call sinners to become His disciples. To follow Him. Diba? That's who we are. We are sinners forgiven of our sins and called by Jesus to follow Him and to walk with Him. So boom! So verses 14 and 15, what is Jesus saying? You know what Jesus is saying? I am the bridegroom. Diba? If the guests of the bridegroom are... Kasi ang mali, Lord, kasi remember they were eating and drinking with tax collectors and sinners. They were celebrating because the Savior was there. Diba? And Jesus said, if the guests are with the bridegroom, why will they mourn? The reason why he is there with tax collectors and sinners is why? What was he telling them? I'm here to forgive your sins. I'm the Messiah you have been waiting for. Ako yung king, yung son of David na ginahulat nyo. And those who believed were celebrating. Why? Because the bridegroom that was promised was actually there with them at that moment. That's why Jesus said, kaya walang nagka-fast. Kaya nga, ah, ari ko di subong eh. Ari ang bridegroom. Now, this picture of Israel being the bride, because that's the picture there. Eh. If God is the bridegroom, then Israel is the bride. That picture, brethren, was very clear in the Old Testament. Okay, let me bring you some examples. Turn to the prophet Jeremiah. In the prophet Jeremiah, Chapter 2, verses 1 to 5, the Lord describes Israel as a bride. Look what, he, look what the word of the Lord says. Jeremiah 2, verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me. Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. I remember the devotion of your youth. How as a bride you loved me and followed me through the desert, through a land not sown. Israel was holy to the Lord, the first fruits of the harvest. All who devoured her were held guilty, and disaster overtook them, declares the Lord. Why? 
Because you were my bride. Eh? Just like a bride, you loved me and you walked with me, ang ban ni Lord, sa Israel. Pero may bad news, eh? verse 5. Eh? This is what the Lord says. What fault did your fathers find in me that they strayed so far from me? They followed worthless idols and became worthless themselves. One of the words that describe the sins of Israel was adultery. Israel had committed adultery with the bridegroom. Grabe, no? Abo ng tanaw ni Lord sa Israel. Eh. Okay? Now, the more uh, serious illustration is really found with the prophet Hosea. Okay? So, turn your Bibles to Hosea. This is your chance to find out where is Hosea in your Bible. Di ba? Amen ba? Oh, pangitaw nyo. I-check nyo. Okay? Jeremiah, nakita nyo ba kanina? Okay? Hosea. Okay. Chapter 1, verse 2. Anong page siya? Page? Ah, line, line, tanga page yun eh, no? Hosea, chapter 1, verse 2. Hosea was a very unique prophet. Why? Because God asked him to do something that described the sin of Israel. Okay? I, 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 but I'll read from verse 2. No? When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go, take to yourself an adulterous wife and children of unfaithfulness. Why? Because the land is guilty of the vilest adultery in departing from the Lord. And if you read Hosea, Hosea actually does that. He looks for a prostitute and marries her. But it was not just for the... It was a message to Israel. Why? Because Israel is guilty of the vilest adultery in departing from the Lord. Grabe, no? And then you go to chapter 2 of Hosea in verse 14. I'm just looking at key verses. You can read Hosea on your own if you want, no? Starting from verse 14, Hosea chapter 2. Therefore, look at this now. This is the message of the Lord to Israel. I am now going to allure her. Okay? I'm going to call her to me. I'm nang mini sang allure. I will lead her into the desert and speak tenderly to her. This is about Israel. There, I will give her back her vineyards and will make the valley of Achor a door of hope. There she will sing as in the days of her youth, as in the day she came up out of Egypt. Look at verse 16. In that day declares the Lord, in that day you will call me my husband. Gravera. And you will no longer call me my master. I will remove the names of the Baals from her lips. No longer will their names be invoked. In that day, I will make a covenant for them with beasts of the field and birds of the air and the creatures that move along the ground. Bow and sword and battle, I will abolish from the land so that all may lie down in safety. Now look at verse 19. Look at the picture here. It's a picture of a wedding. Eh? I will betroth you to me forever. Betrothal in Israel is similar, not exactly the same, but similar to our um, engagement. Diba? In other words, diba? some of you have already engaged to your future wife. Diba? Can you please stand up? Eh, that's joke. Lang. Anyway, oh, kasi may aradi na... Okay, so anyway. So, so in other words, pero next year pa ang inyo nga kasal. Pero ang term sa Israel, betroth. But you know in Israel, the word betroth actually meant you're already married. Subong so, pwede pa i-break ang engagement eh. No, di ba? Pero sa Israel, pag betroth ka, you were already married. And that's the word that the Lord uses here. I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, in love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness and you will acknowledge the Lord. In that day, I will respond, declares the Lord. I will respond to the skies and they will respond to the earth and the earth will respond to the grain, the new wine and oil, and they will respond to Jezreel. Now, the Lord was actually talking about 
and actual harvest again for Israel. Okay, after all their uh, time in exile. Verse 23, I will plant her for myself in the land. I will show my love to the one I called not my loved one. And I will say to those called not my people, you are my people. And they will say, you are my God when he is taken away then. Okay? I'm sorry. And, and, and they will say, you are my God. Ang notes ko ang ginbasa ko. Sorry, Gid. Okay? Now, does the last verse sound familiar? Because where was this verse quoted? Okay? It was quoted to speak about the Gentiles. That God would eventually reach out to the ones who are not called. That's why you notice the gospel in Hosea. You notice that picture of betrothal, of the bridegroom. Okay? And now that the Messiah, Jesus Christ, is right there. This is what Matthew is writing. Eh. When they ask Jesus, na hindi nagka-fast ang imo mga disciples, abal niya, paano maka-fast ang ako ng disciples? Iti ari di ang bridegroom. Diba? The bridegroom is with them. What was the bride? Why was it a time of joy? Because this was God telling His people, I'm the one with authority to forgive you of your sins and I'm going to call you to follow me. Of course, the full extent of that authority would come after Jesus died on the cross. That's why in Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus said, all authority has been given to me. Kaya nga, ah, this bridegroom died for our sins. He lived righteously. He died for our sins. And he rose again from the dead. Subong, siya git ang tuod nga bridegroom. Okay? Now, when you talk about the church, is there a bridegroom that we're waiting for also today? He's not here with us physically. Why? Tapos te, he ascended into heaven already. Eh. Di ba? Pero subong ang church kita, ginahulat man naton ang bridegroom. But it's not anymore for the forgiveness of our sins. Why? Because Jesus has already forgiven our sins. Diba? Amen to that? The bridegroom is going to come. Why? Because He's going to pick up His bride and we're going to live with Him forever. Diba? Amen ba? Excited ba kamo? Are you going to leave everything and follow Him? Ah, dali lang, pastor. Dali lang. Eh, lain naman ang pagnapatay ko, mapalangit ko. Pero subong, in heaven, there is no beer. That's why I'll drink it here. Diba? Gusto ko mag-enjoy. Gusto ko maging manggaranon. Gusto ko, adlaw-adlaw, ara ko sa landers. Diba? Para may free haircut ko, kag-amuni, amuna, etc. Oh, diba? No. Because the bridegroom, kasi turn with me, brethren, uh, by the way, John the Baptist also used the same picture. Gospel of John, <clears throat> chapter 3. In John chapter 3, <coughs> excuse me, the disciples of John also had an issue here. Verse 26. The disciples of John said to him, Are you there? John 3. No? Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side, of the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about, well, he is baptizing. And everyone is going to him. Sino na? To Jesus. Diba? To this John replied, verse 27, A man can receive only what is given him from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Christ, but I am sent ahead of Him. Now look at verse 29. Same picture, di ba? The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for Him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and it is now complete. He must become greater. I must become less. Kaya nga, ah, si John the Baptist, best man lang siya. Di ba? Hindi naman best man ang bida sa kasal, eh, di ba? Ang bridegroom. Eh. At sa mga ni John, sa mga disciples niya, may kaso lang kasi nagdihisa sila eh. 
Na nagbabaptize. Sabi ko ikaw si John the Baptist, hindi naman si Jesus the Baptist. Ba? Mabali dyan, tali lang. Siya ang bridegroom. You, you, you notice, the, that's why when John's disciples came to Jesus, I believe it was a sincere question. Eh. Why are we not fasting? Because John was always pointing to the Christ. Eh. But notice the bridegroom. Brethren, that's who our Jesus is. Because if you have read the book of Revelation, brethren, one day in the last portion of Revelation, the bridegroom will come for his bride. That's who we are. See? We are supposedly the bride. Wait, engage na kita eh, brethren eh. Pinatawad ng aton kasala eh. Gintawad ta ni Lord na mag-follow sa iya eh. Subong, galook forward kita sa bridegroom eh. Okay? Supposed to be eh. That's why those of us who are going through Philippians on Wednesday, That's what Paul always talks about. Eh. Yes, we're suffering today, but we're looking forward to the resurrection of the dead. We're looking forward where to live is Christ and to die is gain. Ang bal ni Paul. Eh. A Christian must always be looking forward. If all you're living for is today, I promise you, every day you're always frustrated or anxious or gareklamo or ano man nga kay nga gatulo ka pen misa subong eh you're not waiting for the bridegroom eh you're not saying lord one day you're going to return this earth is going to be destroyed this world is going to change and yet as human as we are we keep on living for this world diba amo nang sinfulness naton eh we're still looking for this world to satisfy us. Eh. Diba? You notice that? Okay? Why, why do we, why do we always, uh, uh, I don't know if it's just me, huh? because I, I will confess this morning, sometimes when you're down, diba? and daw kakuan sa imo, makabakal ka lang sa Shopee, happy ka na eh. Diba? <laughs> oh, diba? To, to, diba? Something you've always wanted, gin-order mo, pag, ano, pag naksa, pag text ng deliver, ali na ko, yes, okay, pag abot mo, ay, grabe, ang, ang, and at that moment, you're happy, you're happy with that material thing, you're happy with your salary, you're happy with this and that, di ba? And then, later on, madula na naman eh, if you're a believer, huh? uh, even if you're not a believer, because all of these desires, they're fleeting, they're always running away eh. But for us who are disciples of Christ, Jesus is always reminding us, anak, ako. Ako ang iyong mga bridegroom. Diba? And at the time of Matthew's gospel, the bridegroom was right there. And that's why Jesus said, that's why we're not fasting. Because there's no need to mourn. Pero nagabal siya. Balik ta sa Matthew 9. Hamal niya, the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. Then, they will fast. Okay? Then, they will fast. And that is why, when will this be? When will the bridegroom be taken from them at that time? When he dies. Diba? Eventually, he rises again. He ascends into heaven. I'm on Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1, Jesus eventually ascends into heaven and, and the disciples are looking up. And then, God sends an angel and tells them, why are you still looking up? <laughs> He's going to return. Uh, di ba? Ano ba yung last words ng inyong Lord? You will be my witnesses. Okay? In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. Stop looking up. You, He's going to come back. He's going to come back. Okay? Habang ni Lord, when He is taken away, that's where we will mourn. That's why you look at the book of Acts, brethren, there's fasting again. But it's not mourning for the atonement of our sins anymore. Why? Kasi kabalo kita na atone na ang aton nga sins. It's more seriousness and mourning for the world and, and even for ourselves. That's why sometimes we, we're moved to fast when we pray. You know, when, when we come to the Lord, we fast in our seriousness. We fast, we mourn for our sinfulness. And we fa- but that's not for our atonement anymore, it's fasting as we look forward to seeing Him again. Okay? 
But you notice in the New Testament, there's no rule for fasting. Why? Because fasting as a tradition, naging kakas mo kay Lord, it's simply a tradition. And just like what Jesus was doing, you know what Jesus was doing? Jesus was telling them, sino ang upod sa mga disciples? Nga hindi sila nag fast Jesus was pointing back to Himself. Eh. That's what He was telling them. The, the guests of the bridegroom are with Him. Ako ang focus, hindi fasting. Kasi ang, as I mentioned a while ago, ang tendency natin is, nga hindi na natin ginahimo ni. Nga hindi na natin ginahimo ina. That, because that's not the point. The point is, who are we with? Who is with us? Whether we're fasting or not, the point is, the Messiah, at that point, huh, the Messiah was with them. And that was the only thing that mattered. Okay? Jesus, indirectly, was actually breaking tradition. He was breaking tradition and focusing everything on Him. Ako ang bridegroom. Ako ang may authority to forgive sins. Ako ang may authority na magtawag sang sinners na mag- maging disciples. Ako ang bridegroom. Okay? And then later on sa chapter 9, you will notice the two blind men. They will say, Son of David. That's what Matthew was talking about in this portion. Eh. Sino ba siya? Who is this man? See? That was the new wine. Eh. That was the new thing that came. Eh. It's now focused on me and not in tradition. The Messiah was with them. The issue was not the tradition, but Him. Diba? Do you know who He is? And that's why, brethren, even today, how important is it, as I mentioned a while ago, that you make sure you are not just practicing tradition without understanding ano bang pinakapunto sa Christianity. Okay? I always use this as an example. What, what tradition is what you're doing this morning? Why are you here this morning? Kasi Sunday. Te, kung Sunday, ano? Ito masimba ko. Di ba? Ang iman gani, day of obligation. In other words, we're obliged. It's a sin when you don't go to Sunday. But why are you here? Because if you're here and you're not enjoying the bridegroom, it's just tradition. You see? It's just tradition. You see, when you take an act of righteousness, remember, fasting was an act of righteousness in Matthew 6. So Jesus was not uh, teaching against it. But when you take an act of righteousness and you think that it helps in your righteousness, in your being acceptable to God, you know what it is? It's a tradition. You have detached it from the Lord. Okay? That's why it means nothing, especially to God. All you're doing is tradition. Why? Kasi nakatitouch si Lord eh. Ginahimo mo, pero wala man si Lord eh. Wala kang rejoicing sa bridegroom eh. Wala kang rejoicing, you see? When you take an act of righteousness and you think that it helps in the forgiveness of your sin, oh, anong ginahimo mo? You've detached Christ from that tradition and you've made it a way for you to become acceptable to God. Yeah, delikado na. Amo na ang tradition. When you have an act of righteousness and have no sensing at all for the bridegroom, it means nothing. Okay? We need to understand that, brethren. Everything is a tradition, humanly. My preaching every Sunday is a tradition. But if I've detached it from the bridegroom, if I've detached it from Christ Himself, I'm just a preacher preaching. That's all I am. But if I've kept the Lord okay, in what I'm doing, you see, you can be here on Sunday, you can be serving as an usher. You can be serving in the worship team. You can be serving in the children's ministry. You can even be an intercessor in the back room over there. But if you're detached from the Lord, 
What is it? Religion lang. That's all it is. And people will always have those questions. Nga, kamo, di ba? Nga, hindi kamo nagaklap ng hands. Kami, pag nag-worship kami, nagaklap kami ng hands. Kamo, kamo nga eh, hindi. Wala kamo Holy Spirit. Uh, no, di ba? Amo lang din ako din eh. Uy, eh, pinakamili ka pray. Uh, 15 minutes. Uy, kami, pag nag-pray kami, one hour, two hours. Nga kamo, 30 minutes lang. You notice how people will focus on the external. Okay? Because that's tradition eh. Okay? Why do you only have one service on Sunday? Kami, dua, tatlo ka service. Nagka-focus kita sa tradition eh. Now, tradition is not wrong when it is not detached from Jesus. Okay? In other words, someone can come and say, okay, let's fast. But you know what? If we're just fasting for the sake of fasting and we're not really seeking the bridegroom, we're not really fasting for the right reason, naghihimo lang ta tradition. If you're praying, we have intercession. We have intercessors. We have our monthly congregational prayer. If we're just there, para pakitang tao lang, para makita lang sang iba, no, oy, ari ko, naga-intercede ko, ha? Diba? And you think it makes you more pious and more righteous, you have detached it from the bridegroom. And you've made it a tradition. As I mentioned a while ago, you can be here on Sunday. Okay? But this can just be a religious act. You can pray 50 prayers, two hours. You can claim you memorized the Bible. But if you've detached it from the joy of being with the bridegroom, of being with the one who has authority to forgive you of your sins, brethren. You see, what's the point of true Christianity? The point of true Christianity is not what we are doing. The point of true Christianity is Christ. Sino si Kristo? Sa imong heart. See? And that's what Jesus was showing. You're talking about tradition? Iari ko eh. Hindi ba dapat nag-rejoice ka mo? That's why in verse 16, Jesus gives this very unique <laughs> uh, teaching. Diba? Verse 16 sa Matthew 9, diba? No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. For the patch will pull away from the garment making the tear worse. Okay? Now, I, I have to talk to a tailor or a, what do you call this? A tailoress? Ano ba tawag sa babae nga kwan? Dressmaker. Okay? To check to ba ni? Okay? But that's what Jesus said. You put a new cloth on an old cloth and then eventually mater siya. Okay? Ang old cloth, mas stretch siya. Eh, yung, ang, ang new cloth, gali. So, ang old, tungod sa stretch na, ito eh, Mater siya. And the same with the wineskin. Neither do men pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst. Why? Because the new wine expands. Eh. Okay? No, he said, they pour new wine into new wineskins and both are preserved. What was Jesus talking about? He was talking about the new and the old. Diba? Ang new, hindi nyo pwede ibutang sa old. Okay? What was the new in, in this story? Starting from verse 1. What was the new there? When Jesus said, My son, take heart. Your sins are forgiven. Oh! So, dali lang. Abi ko, kinaglan mag-sacrifice kita. Abi ko, kinaglan may feast of atonement pa ta. Di ba, malas ang Pharisees? Only God can forgive sins. Oh, Jesus said, that's why I'm here. This is the new. It's not about what you should do. It's about me being the Lamb of God who gave His life for your sins. That's why I'm... And you know what? If you're an old wineskin, you cannot accept the new wineskin. You're saying, sandali lang. Hindi pwede. Di ba? Kaya ka good works eh. Kasi ang good works, kinaglan ako ang mag-earn sa ako ng kaluwasan eh. Diba? Because that's why I'm here. I'm here to, to try my best to be good so that God will accept me. Tapos hambalon mo ako. 
na mabati lang ko kay Jesus. Tapos mapatawad na nga ako ng asala. You notice the old wine skin? And that's why Jesus says, unless you have a new wine skin, the old cannot be. And then you have the story of Jesus inviting tax collectors and sinners. That's why even up to today, I will not be surprised because I will not be surprised. Why? Because up to today in my heart, I still question why God is using me. I still do. And that's why there are many of us who say, Lord, you will call me to follow you. Dali lang. That's why there's so many of us, ay excuse natin, nga hindi ka pa nag serve kay Lord. Nga, nga everyday, nagkakaraoke ka sa inyo nga balay, kanami sa inyo nga tingog, 100 plus ang inyong nga score, di ba? 100 plus, ba? Or, I don't have eh, karaoke. And yet, you're not using it for God. Ay, kasi hindi ako worthy. Ay, kasi, oh, what's the new wine? What's the new message? Here is Christ first, He forgives you of your sins. Diba? Amen? Next, He calls you to follow Him. Lord, you will call me. Yes, that's who I am. I want to be your Lord. I want to be your master. And like Matthew, eventually you become an apostle. You become someone who serves me. Yes, that question will be there in your heart. But eventually, claro sa imo eh. Wow. The God who forgives me of my sins is the God who will use me. Who am I to share the gospel to my friend? You're a sinner forgiven by Christ. They need to know Christ. And Jesus calls you to follow Him. That's new wine, brethren. And if you're still in your old wine skin, notice you'll always run away. You'll always turn your back. Okay? <laughs> See? And here is Jesus when asked about fasting, he says, hindi importante yung fasting. Okay? The issue is not the fasting. The issue is, are you with the bridegroom? Okay? And if you were an Israelite, this picture of the bridegroom would be clear. Eh? Alay, yung ginambal ni Hosea, ni God Jeremiah, are, are you kana, Lord? You're calling us? Is this you? And you notice, know of course, the sad story is not everyone will believe. But those okay, who would believe, these were those whose old wine skin became new. Okay? Now, the question is this. Who makes us new wine skins? It's not ourselves. We cannot do it. Do you know this teaching of the Lord about new wine skins? It's the same teaching of John chapter 3, verse 3. And I know many of you have memorized John 3, verse 3. Diba? For God so loved the... <laughs> Unless a man is born again. Unless you're born again. Now, how are we born again? Now, it's a mistake for some to tell you if you pray this prayer, you're born again. No, because your being born again does not come from a prayer. Your being born again is a work of God. Okay? That's why Jesus said, diba, in John chapter 3, the wind blows. We don't know where it comes from. It's the same with someone being born again. It's a work of the Spirit. How do you know your new wineskin? All of a sudden, you look at Jesus and say, Lord, ikaw nagali. So that's who you are. See? And that's when it becomes clear na, yes, now we're not saying kasi, Diba? This is the wrong ano, no? uh, ringtone. Please. Oh, do, hindi mahuya, i-close yung phone niyo. Okay? Now, this is that saying, hala, wala ng tradition. So, pwedeng wala na ko Sunday. No! Tradition is still there. Fasting is still there. Prayer is still there. But don't det- detach the Lord from it. Okay? There are many Christians who are saying, I can be a Christian kag wala ko church, kag wala ko Sunday. Lalo ka ba? Hindi, that's not what the Lord is saying. What the Lord is saying is, don't detach me from your life. If you're here this morning and you're not seeking God, you're detached. But when you suddenly realize, oh Lord, in the same way that you were calling the Israelites to honor the Sabbath, that there was a day that they were to give no work 
In the same way, Lord, you call me to have a day where I gather with your people to worship you. I'm here for you, Lord. Not because I'm a member. Not because I'm required. Not because it's a day of obligation. I'm here for you. That's why you wake up early every Sunday. Diba? Hindi yung Lord man dito sa today, nag-aubra na ko gani, gadali ko mag-ubra. No? Tapos sa Sunday, ma- early na naman ako, wag mong tao. Diba? Wala ba akong TGIF, Lord? Kag, ano? Diba? Ang iba na mo na eh. TGIS. Take God it's Sunday to rest. Oh no, it's Monday. Oh, what should Sunday be? I'm coming here for the Lord. Eh. Diba? I'm coming here for you, Lord. To worship you. To listen to a message that you prepared for us. To be with other believers. I'm here for you, Lord. It's a tradition. But it's not detached from the bridegroom. That's why if you're a new wineskin, that's what you realize. You realize, Lord, ang ako nga good works kali, ang ako nga sacrifices, hindi ka yung makapatawad sa ako nga sins. Lord, ikaw lang gali. And that question na, abo lang kasimple, I know there are some of you, you're thinking that this morning, abo, abo lang na kasimple, na, mabilib lang ko kay Jesus, forgive na ako. When you have new wine skin and God changes your heart, that truth will become so clear. Why? Because you'll recognize who He is. Can you imagine, brethren, no matter how emotionally I will tell you this, unless God opens your heart and makes you understand it, you will never treasure who Christ is. Because He is the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity. He was there in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. And yet He becomes man. And then He suffers. And then He dies on the cross. He's slaughtered. For who? Of course, for His exaltation, but for those of us who've sinned, those of us who believe in Him. Ganun lang kasimple, I tell you, if you have a new wineskin, you will understand, Lord, if that's who you are and that's what you did, it's worth more than any good work, more than any sacrifice, more than any religious practice I have because you, hambal ni Pablo sa Philippians, it's the surpassing greatness of knowing who Jesus Christ is. That's what takes away my being circumcised on the eighth day, a Hebrew of Hebrews, a Pharisee. Ang tanan sina, loss. Why? Kasi nakilala ko na kung sino si Kristo. And that's where all of your tradition, Protestant ka man, or Catholic, or Iglesia ni Kristo, or Mormon, all of your traditions will be thrown away when you actually realize who that man was who was nailed to the cross and died. That's the new wine, brethren. And only a new wine skin will be preserved. Amali Lord, they pour new wine into new wine skins and both are preserved. Kaya Ang new wine na nagsulod sa aton, ma-preserve siya. It's not about tradition, brethren. Okay. And next week, okay, nag-aaso na yung clock. Eh. <laughs> Sorry, kid. Okay, next week, what we're going to, you know what we're going to see? We're going to see a man whose daughter died and he comes to Jesus by faith. You're going to see a woman who said, if I just touch his cloak by faith, because Jesus said, because if you have new wine skin, how will this new wine come in? Through your faith. And then we're going to see two blind men. When they call Jesus, what are they going to call him? Son of David. Wow. Kabalo sila. Naamunin siyang son of David. The one who was promised. And their eyes were opened. But we're also going to see Pharisees who will not believe. Grabe, no? But that's it, brethren. This new wine some of us here, or I'd like to say many of us, if not all of us, brethren, let's rejoice that this new wine, 
has been poured into new wineskins. And you notice how the Lord is preserving that faith as you grow with Him each and every day. For some of you, maybe today, the Lord has opened your heart. Praise God for that, brethren. But notice when you have new wine skin, you will always thirst for the new wine. Always. Okay? That's why don't let anything hinder you from growing with this new wine. Some of you are ending this service saying, Lord, hindi ko pa naiintindihan. Pero praise God, you're asking that question. Because maybe some of you will say, Lord, do I need that new wine skin? Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Because the Lord will answer your prayer. But that's the joy of the bridegroom, brethren. Okay? Because He came to forgive us of our sins and eventually we're going to await that wedding day where the church will join the bridegroom and live forever what? with Him. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank You so much for revealing who You are. You have revealed to us this morning, as, as You revealed Yourself to the Israelites, You're the bridegroom. You came to betroth Yourself to Israel and to call those who were not your people to become your people, and that's us, Gentiles, Lord. Salamat gid. And Father, we pray that all of us will be careful not to focus on tradition, but will focus on you, Lord. Everything we practice only has meaning when it is not detached from you, because you are the very meaning of everything that we do. If there is any tradition that takes that away, Lord, may you make it clear to our minds. But we do all these things. We come here on Sunday, we pray, we fast, we read your Bible only because of the joy of being with you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, O God. And once again, remind us that as we leave our worship continues, Lord, in our lives as we walk with you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's bless the Lord. Uh, okay. A uh, quick reminder, every Wednesday we have our Bible study sa Book of Philippians, so you're very welcome to join us uh, 6 p.m. Okay? God bless.